how to successfully invest in Latvia's property market. In this video, we'll map out how to legally purchase a piece of property in Riga and what are the pitfalls to avoid. We'll cover topics like due diligence, real ride agreements, rental contracts, and the likes. Hi, my name is Romain Armato, and if you want to learn how to invest in international real estate to secure and diversify your wealth, check out lifeinvest.eu. So let's start with the first questions. What are the main issues people have investing in Riga? It depends on the type of the investment. If you're investment buying... like a, a sing, like a property I'm looking out to buy currently, mm -hmm. it's a two bedroom, one studio to two mm -hmm. bedroom mm -hmm. as an investment uh, to lease mm -hmm. long term or short term, mm -hmm. and, and eventually have uh, a place I could stay that um, gains in value over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I would say. Uh... An apartment uh, transaction wouldn't require such a complicated uh, due diligence uh, to be done, but of course, you, the first first thing you need to do is uh, check the records of the apartment itself. Hmm. We have a land book which is digitally available. Uh, so, uh, what what the lawyer would do first of all, check the land book. Then, of course, you check the seller because there could be some uh, uh, problems. For instance, the seller is experiencing uh, some recent problems with the uh, tax administration or some creditors. So uh, you can sign a contract, but you will not be able to register the apartment if there will be some kind of uh, some debt involved. Yeah, yeah, some debt involved. And uh, if the creditor is asking the court, for example, to seize the apartment, ah, then you will be... So you buy the property and then you get it seized because in the yes, back you had some debt. Yes, and uh, if it's done until the registration, uh, so you're in uh, quite a bad situation. And it's all in Latvian, so uh, there's no way I can understand myself. Yes, uh, it could be like that, but uh, that's uh, what, what, what usually is done. It's a complex of um, legal uh, instruments which, which are applied by lawyers. Uh, you just check the, how trustable or how trustworthy is the seller, uh, how the land book of the apartment looks, and uh, you also check uh, what's in the uh, contract. Uh, it, it, it depends. Uh, it depends who the contract, uh, which which party of the contract uh, is preparing it. Usually, it's the seller. So yes. the seller is uh, like uh, giving you an option to sign, and uh, if there are some kind of um, let's say uh, red flags in the contract, uh, okay. the lawyer should like deal with that. What type of red flag? An example. Uh, there could be, uh, for example, you could buy not a like separate apartment. You can buy also ideal parts of the house, but it's like in in in, in nature, it's an apartment. But some houses uh, in Riga are not split in apartments. So, ah, so it's co co yeah co, co, co ownership co ownership co ownership. Yeah. Okay. So and you think you're buying something that you you hold for yourself? Yes. But in fact, it's it's, it's detained just, by multiple people. Yes, and it's just the ideal part of the building. In that wow. in in that type of uh, purchase, you need to be sure that you are also signing not the purchase agreement, but the agreement on joint ownership of the house. So only then you will be sure that you are buying uh, this specific apartment, let's say number five on the third floor of the building, not some kind of nominal share of the building. So it, it depends from the property. I see, I see. Very, very, very yes. insightful. To... And, and, and also uh, you should be always uh, checking what, what, what you are actually buying. Uh, right. There could be some kind of um, tenant, uh, for example, living in the apartment. Uh -huh. And you should be sure that you are uh, aware of it uh, and you are reconcluding the uh, contract with him later on. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Because so there's uh, no bad surprise, or otherwise, yes. is, is it is it hard to evict a, a tenant? It, it's quite hard, as in any country. Yeah. Uh, tenants are like protected uh, by courts and by law uh, because it's one of the let's say uh, principal rights of the person to live somewhere. Yeah. And uh, just to be sure that nobody is evicted illegally, mm -hmm. they are protected until you prove uh, contrary on the court. So basically, if you are buying with a tenant, it would be uh, advised to have like clear picture with the tenant and maybe sign already a new rental agreement with him. Okay. Uh, so you will be sure uh, uh, of the uh, conditions. Uh, how you will cooperate with this right and right and, and that's a perfect segue because i was going to ask what what to look for in the in a rental agreement what, mm -hmm. what's the best rental agreement in estonia for example is termless with mm -hmm. a with a one to two month uh, notice uh, 
Uh, here, it's on contrary. Uh, you need oh. to have a short-term uh, rental agreement. Okay. And uh, the best option would be to register it in a land book because uh, we had a recent law amended. It was uh, last year uh, because the older rental law was uh, for uh, 30 years uh, 30 years old and it doesn't it, it didn't it change it didn't no it, it didn't work quite well in a uh, like like current situation okay so we changed the law and uh, one of the new in, uh, introductions were that once you register this uh, rental uh, agreement in a land book it will be way much simpler for you to evict the tenant if the uh, contract expires okay so basically you are uh, able to go to the court bailiff and you you are not required to go to court and like sue the tenant for several years in a court okay. so the most uh, significant issues would be having a quite clear short-term lease agreement and registered in the land book okay very straightforward yeah. so there's there is room in case of anything happens yes okay wonderful and how do you see um uh, you're a man of experience, uh, more than 10 years in the business. Mm -hmm. How do you see the legal framework evolved? Uh, is there like specific regulations on short-term rent, for example, to expect? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say uh, regarding to the uh, rental agreements, as I, as I mentioned, the new law was introduced, uh, introduced uh, like last year. Yeah, uh, can be overall about uh, company creation. Uh, I'm trying to understand if mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the next 10 years, if it's still a good opportunity for investors mm -hmm. and entrepreneurs. Uh, I would say the legal framework for uh, real estate transactions or company foundation, they will not uh, change significantly because I, I would say that the, those uh, legal frameworks are quite up to date now. Right, okay. Uh, the only issue is uh, should we that should we uh, take 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 uh, a look at it is uh, how the market changes yes. so not i would i wouldn't say that the legal framework would uh, change significantly you could be sure that uh, it's it's uh, it's up to date and and mm -hmm. it shouldn't be expected some uh, like revolutions in a and, and and what i see in estonia is that the the, the gdp depends a lot of internet on in a, in a national invest foreign mm -hmm. direct investments and so on mm -hmm. i think that's it, it's 60 percent of the gdp comes from abroad mm -hmm. do we see something here which which would emphasize the fact that uh, the laws will mm -hmm. most likely remain the same uh I can say that uh, the the foreign investments here is uh, like maybe half of the transactions, okay. or even a bit less, maybe because okay. the local market is quite active, and also right. the local people are uh, looking for investment opportunities. And as we all know, that the real estate is one of the traditionally the main, the main ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. traditionally the main uh, investment. Uh, the most interesting thing for foreign investors are the prices here. Right. And, 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 and uh, the market is way much wider than in Tallinn. Huh. In, in Tallinn, the, I would say the real estate prices would be somewhere in between 3,000 or 5,000 per square, square meter. Yes, correct. Here, Even more. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and here you can uh, buy a nice apartment for 2.5. Uh, it, it will be a central location and uh, something you cannot buy in Tallinn. Mm -hmm. That's why many of my Estonian clients are complaining about those uh, prices in Tallinn. They are asking me, let us know if there are some nice properties to buy, we, we would definitely buy. And, and, and also one part of the, my business is uh, connected to auctions where the, mm -hmm. the, the properties are sold on auctions. And uh, you can always see that there's uh, plenty of Estonian companies or Estonian uh, investors that are, that are like placing a bid. Mm -hmm. So. We are competing uh, now. Now the situation has been changed a bit because, like, 20, 30 percent of all the bids, uh, also on a free market or the auctions, were done by Russian people. But now the situation has changed, and uh, they don't have such a um, uh, easy opportunity to buy something right. here uh, due to those uh, sanctions and stuff uh -huh. like that. And, and and I would say the market will get a bit more easy for investments. Right, because uh, back then it, it, the, the, the opportunities were flying off the shelves. Yes, yes. So now there are, there are more opportunities mm -hmm. um, and, and it's an entry point. Yeah, yeah. If you like this strategy, you like the next video. Then we introduce you to our lawyer for you to legally invest in Latvia. That's only available to the private members of our flagship program Life Invest Heritage, which is an online course that teaches you how to set up and invest internationally. If you're not a member yet, Join by clicking the link in the description below or the first pinned comment. Happy investing!